Good morning, good evening, and good day. Thank you so much for watching Attack Power Gaming. Today, we get to our next How to Get Good tutorial with How to Attack. Uh, this is one I've been waiting to wait for, make for a while, and I think we've finally collected enough content here that we can highlight some ways to make excellent attacks in Steel Division 2, which is key and something that's very challenging at the beginning for newer players. If you enjoy this content, please hit that like button and subscribe. It's free to you, and it really helps the channel out quite a lot. Let's dive right in. So let's go over the first and most basic way to attack your opponent, and that's just with simply overwhelming numbers. Uh, this is the least effective and least efficient way, but it doesn't mean it's not effective. So let's let's make sure that is clear, because sometimes there's a misinterpretation between something being inefficient and being bad. It's not that it's bad, it's just not super duper effective. So for example here, I'm making attack, I want to take the top of this hill, so I'm literally sending four MGs, a... a a AT gun, some armor and such. That's a lot of stuff. I mean, four MGs is a little ridiculous, okay? And we can see I'm going to get punished here momentarily for not, like, breaking these up further. But the point being, if sometimes the best way, especially at the beginning, this is the, this tactic is most viable or most likely f to d happen at the beginning of the game because, you know, you have 750 points to deploy, right? So you have basically the highest concentration of troops that you'll have throughout the game. And you can just throw stuff at your opponent. So, for example, I'm just throwing four MGs with a little bit of support weapons and stuff at my opponent and hoping to overwhelm whatever he has on the other side of this hill. So that's one way to do it. And later in the game, I mean, it's it's common at the beginning of the game, but it also can be very effective at towards later halves of the game because if your opponent's not expecting it and, you know, you suddenly throw, you know, 200 or 300 points of troops at a singular point on the map, it's very unlikely, unless it was like, you know, a main theater of fighting before that point, it's very unlikely that the opponent is going to be able to really quickly react to such an overwhelming force. Because think about 300 points of troops... Sorry about that. Um, think about 300 points of troops. That's like, you know, if it's 200 points of infantry, if they're 20 point infantry, that's 10 squads of infantry. That's a lot. Uh, you know, throwing a couple light tanks or something or whatever and support weapons, that's a lot of stuff. So you suddenly throw that number of troops at a singular point, it's going to make some sort of progress, right? Now, it's important that those troops are not all bunched up in a group like this. This is bad, okay? This is always bad for attacking, let me be very clear. Do not have your troops bunched up in an attack, especially, so this is tough. At the beginning of the game, your troops are naturally going to be bunched up because, you know, you kind of drove them to specific spots, which is at the beginning of the game when I unload, put my unload orders on my transports, I do try to spread them out even just a little bit. So, like, if I had all my dudes going to here, which I did, but I unloaded them early, I would, like unload here, here, and here, just to spread them out a little bit. So if something goes terribly long, at least they're not all bunched up. The only reason these were bunched up is because I had them spread out a little bit for further forward, but there was a PTRS and I had to unload early, so they're all bunched up. So that's one big thing for all attacks, for all of these strategies. Do not have your troops bunched up in a blob when you attack. Why? Because then every single attack that they receive is suppressing everybody. And we're going to see here how this TU drops his bombs. I try to spread all my troops out really fast, but I'm going to lose two things and all of them are going to get suppressed and most of the, they're going to be mostly dead. So that's why you don't want to have your troops fully bunched up at any point. That's really bad. That is going to basically get, make it really easy for your opponent to break any attack. You know, whether they have artillery, whether they have, you know, any kind of heavier support weapon, that's generally going to make it very easy. Now our next this is our next kind of basic attack here. I want to make sure that people understand. And this is attacking with some support. So this is something that a lot of people don't do enough of. So we can see here, I'm about to crest this hill. Okay, and I'm moving the VK9 only up to about here. Let's put this on my view instead. Okay. okay. So we want to make sure, so you can see I have attack orders here. Okay. To make a nice supported push here. What I want, I would love to have some leadership. So I have the right to fear here, pumping up and giving them some veterancy. I should have spread these out more. So that is a mistake on my part. You do not want your troops this close here. You're going to see when this thing fires a burst, a lot of them are going to get suppressed, even though only one's getting shot. But more importantly than I have this support weapon, this VK9, 
armor unit to help support these infantry. So now I'll be able to shoot at this Gavardia with this support unit. This is called combined arms. This is extremely key. This is 100% the most important thing that you must get out of this video. In order to successfully attack in Steel Division 2, you need to combine your troops. You see how two units are getting suppressed with only one unit shooting at them? This is why you need to spread your troops out, okay? You can see I am trying to move him because I recognize that this was stupid. Now, this is part of this is just overwhelming firepower as well. This is the send a ton of troops thing. I notice I'm not moving my car way, my vehicle way into this light forest here because he can just die to any sort of light AT inside this. So when making these sort of attacks, combined arms is the key. If you're going to attack forward with infantry, have something behind them supporting their push. Whether that be support weapons with high HE damage, whether that be a tank, it, just a tank is fine. Whether that be some machine guns, something that is going to support them. Why? Because the second the opponent starts shooting at your troops from the tree line, because they have a huge cover advantage, right? You're walking out in the middle of nowhere, they have cover. Okay, they're obviously going to dominate your infantry because you have no cover and they're going to die immediately so what you need is something behind them to then shoot the things that pop out of the forest and suppress them you know counter suppress them so your infantry can push forward and start dealing the damage and get into the cover once they're into the cover then it becomes a slog of which of your infantry is better can you get support units into that even further okay but the main point is to get over these open ground areas you need to have some sort of support set up behind your infantry so when they start pushing forward they can actually make progress otherwise they're just gonna die do not drive five trucks up to this tree line okay let's say i'm trying to push this tree on do not drive five trucks up to here and just try to do something without any support now if you know exactly what's going on in the opponent's side maybe you can do that you know if the game has developed a little further you know you've pushed the opponent off this hill maybe you have some armor just like chilling here so you know there's nothing here maybe then it's a little safer to drive trucks up to about here but you should never drive them right up to the edge of a woods because then they'll just get killed okay so do not just like oh i'm gonna drive five infantry units and overwhelm no 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 put a machine gun over here at least at least put a machine gun over here or an he a gun or something like that support weapon a tank whatever and attack this then yeah that this is how you actually build momentum and this is how you get your attacks to succeed if you just throw troops around you're going to lose and i see so many players doing this they just pour troops into an area it's not that effective i said that's their first kind that's your like level one attack pour troops at it it's not effective it's, it, it works at times and depending on how you implement it but it's not effective try not to do that try to set up some sort of support line tanks armor support weapons whatever and then make a push from there that's how you make a well well-supported and successful combined arms attack. Another thing I want to mention when making attacks, but this is generally at any point, veterancy is even more key when making attacks because you're naturally at a disadvantage when you are attacking because you're in less cover, right? So you have to make sure that you kind of negate that opponent advantage by giving your troops tons of veterancy. By having a veterancy bonus, you kind of it kind of helps to... It doesn't fully negate the cover, you know the cover differential but it does help make your troops a lot more effective and i mean in general you really want to be giving your troops veterancy they do so much more and you get so much more value out of each one of them when they have a lot of veterancy so really try to make try to make use of your leaders now be careful if you, you do not want your leader standing in the front of the the fight you saw before i had him on the edge of this hill where he couldn't get shot because it's so important that he doesn't die when you see an opponent attacking you kill their leader first literally manually target their leader kill it and their opponent's effectiveness will literally cut in half immediately do not just let their leader live just because you can another thing with attacking you'd see me there a moment i tried to just walk him forward further to get him into the green cover so like when you have this weird fight where you have one guy in yellow one guy in green usually moving your troops is really bad so when you're attacking the big problem is your troops are moving and they do not receive a cover bonus they actually like receive a debuff essentially uh because they're moving they receive more damage than when they're standing still so there's always this kind of push and pull of you have a troop right here so let's say he's standing right here the choice is to stand here and try to keep shooting the opponent's troops and chances are you're going to lose because they're in heavy cover you're not okay 
But if you move them, they're going to die faster. So you have to kind of determine how close am I. Like, if I'm, like, this far away, I probably would not run to the forest. I'm too far. Uh, going all the way to here with your infantry units, they're going to take a lot of damage on the move. Uh, it's just not going to be good. If I'm standing, like, right here, yeah, walk them in. Get them into that green cover, lose the one or two extra troops, and get them into green cover immediately. Because without that cover equivalency, you are going to lose the fight. Okay? You're just going to not perform well enough to actually win the fight. That's why you can see most things are attack moves for the most part. You generally want to attack move unless it's a situation like this where this is bad. Like, he's out in the middle of nowhere. He's going to die. I'm going to move him immediately to this house. I don't want him to stop because he's just going to die immediately if he stops. So... That's one thing with attacking. You don't want to just blue click, like right click so they walk. Because they're going to die really fast. You kind of want to Q move, have them stop, let them shoot. They'll at least do some damage before they die. Careful of elevation. So you see why the, see this SU-2 is not firing. Why? Because it's at an angle that it is incapable of depressing its gun far enough to actually shoot on top of this hill. I know visually... It, we, we think, well, yeah, it, it, it's bent right there. It can totally shoot. But the in-game mechanics, when things are stuck on hills and stuff, there is actually a half-decent chance that they will not be able to fire, which is why I do not want my Hetzer to push all the way down to this part of the hill, not just because it's out of cover, but more importantly because it's not going to be able to shoot down off of this hill onto things down there. So you can see me immediately, because it was not firing. I was too far down this hill. My elevation was killing my ability to depress the gun far enough to shoot things down here. So be very careful when attacking on hills and things with armored vehicles, with, with vehicles in general. You know, infantry do not suffer from this. They can shoot from any elevation. But when you are going up hills or going down hills, just be very, very careful. If you notice that your weapon is aiming, it's aiming, but it's not like actually firing, that's because it's at it's in a really bad aiming position and it can't fire at that level. You're going to have to back it up or move it forward or change the angle in some way that it can fire off of that hill. This is really, really key. I see a lot of people totally fail, and it works on defense, offense, it doesn't matter. Um, but attacking, you tend to find yourself on a hill a little bit more often. When you defend, you can kind of position yourself, right? When you're attacking, you're on these weird hills. So you can see his SU-152 did not fire one shot because it just could not aim properly down the hill to hit my Hetzer back. Very, be very careful about this. Be extra, extra careful about this. Just remember this when you're using vehicles on hills. I would sometimes actually just move them instead of attack move them. Just move them so they get up on top of the hill. Uh, because otherwise, they're not going to fire at all. And you're going to die. Back to what I was saying before. A really key thing to making a good attack is recon. Seeing what your opponent is doing. So we can see I have this Aufklär on return fire. You do kind of want to use return flyer with your recon units. Because you don't want them to die unless you're like using them as a, an offensive force. So say you have a, I don't know, a, 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 there's a Panzer III recon tank. That is a very useful armored vehicle on its own. Um, you probably want to use it in battle, so you're probably not going to put it on return fire. But an Alfclair, I don't want this thing fighting. It doesn't fight well at all. It's a, it's a poopy fighter. So I'm not going to put, leave it on. I'm going to put it on return fire, and I'm going to put it in positions that it can actually see stuff. Okay, so I know I've seen with this VK-9 that was before it was positioned here. I saw a number of troops come in through here. So now I have information of what can down here. I know there's an armored unit. You got T-34 and a couple infantry. This information is extremely key. I can see these Gavardia covering here. So I know I can't just walk troops out to try to capture this position. It's really important that you use your recon wisely enough so that you can know where the opponent is. Okay, and this allows you to make informed attack and not just throw troops at lines. Like, I, I could just, and now I can see this sniper. I would not see that otherwise. It would just be shooting me. So, use your recon wisely. Post it up in positions where you're planning to attack. Gather the information so that you know what you need to do. And then make an informed decision when you are going to attack. So the next step in making a good attack is taking out the opponent's support and backline units. So he's got this T-3485 on the hill with 2,000 meter range, which means he can overlook this town very well. If I'm going to make a push down this road into this town, I need this thing to be dead. I cannot make a push with this sort of unit covering his front line. So it's important that first I start to pick off units further back or units that have higher range values to facilitate making a good attack. If I just threw this guy up here, that T-34 would have popped at least one, if not both, of those infantry transports long before they ever let something out, or I would have had to unload them at a bad position where they'd be out in the open like this right now. 
and would have taken a ton of damage. So it's important, and this comes in with the recon thing, you have to be aware of what the opponent has that you need to deal with. Don't just throw troops at a problem, okay? You need to first whittle them down a little bit or at least establish a good support line yourself before making attack. So you can see I have kind of like a support line of troops. I have armor, I have armor, I have some machine guns, and then I have infantry in the front. So when I decide to develop this attack, I have something behind to actually support it. I have my leader here. I have all kinds of resources that actually allow my attack to be successful. I'm not just throwing troops forward. We can see this AT gun is shooting down the road to support my infantry. That is making a difference. That is suppressing this Gavardia much more quickly. It's not that the the it's not that this gun's doing a lot of damage. It really isn't. Okay, yeah, it's taking out one or two maybe. It's the suppression. It's the suppression bonus that you receive from having these units fire as well that makes the difference. As well as having some AA behind here to help kind of protect the push because a single bomber can probably do it especially against a division like 44th can do a lot of damage a tu2s can really easily destroy that and you can see me here using artillery to prep and attack across this hill and kind of whittle back their flag sometimes you don't need to make a full attack now here's what exactly what i talked about earlier i know the opponent cannot get on top of this hill so i know moving up and over here is a safe bet so i'm sending appropriate troops pioneers into this forest and i'm unloading them to push in across this forest and down to make that attack successful i don't need as much support i do have support i have a machine gun right over here i have recon tell me where i am i'm using my artillery to whittle down troops that I can see and then I'm making this attack so it's supported by all this support weapons all around so when I attack this I know at least I'll be able to get into the woods I know for sure my pioneers will get here and then from there they can take over and do the job they're designed to do which is kill units at close range and use their grenades and such so this is how you make a smart push you prepare in advance and then you make an attack do not just throw troops at problems it's not going to solve what's going on you need to establish good lines and then make forward pushes okay at the beginning of the game it's a little bit more of a rush okay you are going to be like a, just sending troops because you don't have time to establish now you doesn't mean you can't i sent these machine guns and i unloaded them and that kind of established some sort of support for myself but on the flip side at the beginning you got to get troops to certain positions and get there fast so you have to keep that in mind as well you're going to be a little bit less supported at the beginning of the game but as the game goes on, you have time to kind of like, oh, see? So the second this thing revealed itself, now all my troops over here start blasting it and it dies. Not that these guys couldn't kill that on their own, but the fact is this allowed them to move faster and push into this area instead of having to waste their time killing that. The next thing I want to talk about with attacking is making sure not to overextend yourself. So I killed an infantry unit here and the front line crumpled backwards like this. And now I have this big open area. And it probably means this Gavardi is the only thing exerting influence on this front line. Okay, so this is this is really important to learn how units exert influence on the front line. Okay, they do have a pretty wide berth if there's nothing around them. So like if we see these are like equal distance, the front line is going to pick a spot right kind of in between the two. So that means there's probably no troops all the way up until this Gavardia here. So yeah, I could probably really aggressively push forward, but the fact is if I'm wrong, so we can see this kind of weird bend here. There might be something in this forest. There's definitely something pushing up the hill here. So if he, you know, makes some sort of push, I might have a problem. I don't need to overextend myself. I I know that he's not going to be able to kill these guys in this forest, especially three Jaeger pioneers. He's not going to be able to get in here. So I just I just want the flag. Yeah, I could push and get more territory. And maybe I maybe I can momentarily capture this. But that's an overextension. Then all he has to do then is move some troops, unload them here, and push them up. Yeah, I got some support, but it he could probably get back in here pretty easy and I definitely can't defend this flag it's too far back so be careful when making attack you know you want to push your advantage you want to take what you can take but you have to make sure you know what you can defend as well if you're just making huge you can see these Jaeger pioneers are kind of out on their own they do not have my support line here to give them protection I'm not going to just keep willy-nilly throwing them forward. This is how you lose your troops. This is how you overextend and die. So just be very careful with attacks. Do what you plan. If you see advantages, take advantage. But understand that infantry aren't going to hold the line all by themselves way far away from their support weapons, especially if the enemy can bring in support weapons of their own. So I want to show another example here of combined arms giving your, giving your troops a chance to actually push in and how to prep for a major attack. So on this hill here, I have an IG-33 support gun. I have some AT here in my pack 38. I have a Stug 4 as well. My goal is to push into this town. So I've called in these infantry units here, which 
I plan to preface their push with this Nebelwerfer 300 millimeter. This is essentially like an off map. The way it functions, it, the damage it does is so high and the amount of suppression it causes is so great. That's basically an off map. So let's see how this works. I fire it into the town. Okay. The rockets come in. I mean, in this case, they're going to end up killing the stuff, which is nice. Not what I expected, but... You know, my goal is to suppress, so you see the front line still doesn't fall back, so I don't know that, I just assume the things are suppressed. And now I'm going to make my push with all these troops supporting them across this open ground. So that way if anything comes after me, I can, you know, these things can destroy it, and these guys can make this push in. So this is how you preface an attack with off map. So you call in the off map, it starts coming down, you send in your troops to surrender or kill whatever is left inside of the town. So I can even, I can simply drive up and I can see now that there's no troops over here and I'm going to safely deploy my troops in the town, establishing a bridgehead into this town. So that's how you preface your attacks with off map. Uh, this, this is, that's the way to do it. Uh, you, and you can be even more aggressive. Like if I knew there were still some troops left, I probably would have driven one of those uh, trucks right down the middle so they could surrender whatever was in the town. You'll see this done all the time on high level play in, you know, like the league uh, using off map to suppress your opponent's troops and then make a big push in to capture and mop up what's ever left of the opponent after that point. That is the way to establish a good position and attack. Uh, it's a really effective way. That's why off map is so popular because it's really kind of cheap to do that. Um, make sure you use these things in that fashion. Use your off map to actually establish a bridgehead. Do not use off map just to kill troops because it doesn't. Like, let, let me be clear. Off map really doesn't kill a lot of troops. Sometimes, sure, it does okay, but that's not its goal. Its goal is to suppress and interrupt the opponent so that you can then make easy and successful attacks that surrender their troops and capture the areas that you're pushing into. I hope this video gave you guys a better idea of how to make good attacks. To wrap up, the most important thing is combined arms. Use different kinds of troops. Don't just throw infantry forward, okay? Do not just throw tanks forward, okay? Just attacking with... I don't even have a video of me just attacking with tanks because that's not a smart thing to do. They can't see. A, they have no eyes, so they cannot see. So when you attack with tanks, make sure you have some sort of infantry or recon so that they can actually see what they're attacking, okay? So if, if you're going to make a dedicated tank push, support them with eyeballs. They cannot see. They are blind on their own. Second, most attacks, if not all of them, should feature some sort of combination of weapons, okay? So support weapons, AT weapons, infantry, tanks, whatever have you. This is really key to making a successful attack, is combining your troops together. Singular types of troops don't make great attacks. Now, some situations, some terrains are limited. Forests really can only work with, you know, green forests only can do infantry, right? So you are forced to only bring infantry. So what do you need to do is bring in the right kind of infantry. Bring in CQC infantry, bring in a leader to make sure that they're fighting at peak efficiency, you know. And then you can actually still support using mortars and artillery and long range things to help suppress the infantry in those forests. That's one way to reach into forests to help your attacks. Use artillery and mortars to help you push into those heavy green areas. Yellow areas, use light tanks, use vehicles, armored cars, things like that, that can reach out a little bit and see, along with your infantry. Because remember, infantry with SMGs do not function well in the yellow forest because they can get attacked at over 100 meter range, at 150 specifically, to, and basically start dying. So you need to be very careful that you are doing that so that your SMG troops don't die before they ever get to do anything. So be very careful when attacking into those areas as well. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe and have a fantastic day.